All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to introduce myself, my name's Tabitha Brown and I am a um, SOR teacher at St. Patrick's College in Campbelltown. And today I will be presenting to you on the significant practice Hajj in Islam. So I've just put up on the screen there our learning intention and success criteria. So throughout this presentation, um, I want you to have an understanding of the rituals and actions of the Hajj and the impact that these has both on the individual and the community of um, believers in Islam. And then also at the end of the presentation, I'm going to look at how you apply your learnings to questions in section two of your HSC and trial exam, as well as section three and what's required for a short answer response as opposed to an extended response. Up there as well, you'll see um, just a success criteria. So by the end of this presentation, you should be able to explain the characteristics of Hajj, have um, an understanding, so to be able to identify and explain three to four beliefs that relate to the pr practice of the Hajj, um, make a judgment about the significance of Hajj to both individuals and the community, and then apply your understanding of course content to both section two and section three of your trial and HSC paper. So I thought to start us off, I would put up some testimonies of adherents who have attended the Hajj and have experienced the Hajj themselves. So um, here's some testimonies that are up on the screen here. This is really important to have an understanding of the impact that the Hajj has on the individual. So the individual adherent, um, that bottom one there, I went for Hajj with my husband in 2016 at the age of 36 years old. When I first saw the Kaaba, which we know is a centre of worship in um, Islam, and uh, the feeling was indescribable. I felt so tiny and my heart was relieved. I started to cry without even realising it. So the impact that this um, pilgrimage has on adherence is significant and can't be understated. So it's important that when you're writing for either a short answer or, or an extended response on Hajj, that you're really bringing in the impact that it has. So having a look at the syllabus, okay, I've put up on the screen here what the syllabus asks and what is required of you from a syllabus perspective here. So um, when we're looking at our first one, so describe one significant practice within Islam drawn from Obviously, Hajj is our focus here. So for this, you need to be able to provide the main characteristics and features of Hajj. And you need to apply it within Islam. So the whole tradition of Islam as a whole. And we know from our preliminary content that Hajj is one of the five pillars of faith, okay? That every single Muslim needs to go on the Hajj in their lifetime if they are physically able to and financially able to. You also need to be able to demonstrate how this practice expresses the beliefs of Islam. So for this, we need to clearly show how the ritual elements of harm of Hajj express the Islamic beliefs. So demonstrate means we need to show by example. Now, it's not only just showing by um, clear examples in your responses, but you also need to back up those examples with explanations of what these rituals are and how they relate to the principal beliefs. And remember our terminology from the syllabus for beliefs for Islam, these are our articles of faith. And lastly, you need to be able to analyze the significance of the practice for both the individual and the Muslim community. So for this particular dot point of the syllabus, we need to look at the relationships between elements of rituals and beliefs and how they have significance. So you need to show relationships and implications. So for this um, year 12, you need to be able to have judgment. So you need to make a judgment on the significance. So why is it so important? And we see in the testimonial slide beforehand of the impact that it has on the individual, but also then what it has on the community. And so for individuals, it's obviously personal experience and it's their personal testimony on how they individually live out their faith. But Hajj is also massively significant to the community. And using our Arabic term of the Ummah, the community, it's a communal experience and the theology regarding the community in this particular case. So just having a recap of our prior learning from prelim, you would all be aware of the Articles of Faith. 
So we know that there's the six articles of faith in Islam that are up on the screen here. And you need to, year 12, take these six articles of faith and map them to the Hajj. So one thing I'd jot down in your notes at the moment would be take these six principles and then apply them to the various rituals and actions that take place in Hajj. And I'll mention them later in today's presentation, but make a note for yourself that this is something you need to do. So you need to be able to link these to the actions of the Hajj. And some allow that a little bit clearer than others but you should be able to make an align with each one of them within Hajj. And also our five pillars of faith. So as we know, when we're looking at the Hajj, Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam and it's attending our pilgrimage to Mecca, which is a once in a lifetime opportunity for the Muslim adherent. Now with this as well, each of the other five pillars have a place within Hajj. Okay, particularly our first three of Shahada, Salah and Zakat are uh, all um, exemplified throughout Hajj. But one of the points that you will make in either a short answer or an extended response for Hajj is that it's one of the five pillars and it's obligatory. So every single Muslim, unless they are um, physically unable or financially unable, need to make this pilgrimage. So a brief overview of the Hajj. So Hajj is one of the five pillars of faith in Islam and it's a pilgrimage and it's an obligation. Now this quote from the Living Religion textbook is a beautiful quote that um, summarizes the Hajj really well. So it's a once in a lifetime obligation upon adult men and women whose health and means permit it. So when we're looking at health, they need to be physically able to complete the Hajj because it takes a toll on their body as we know with any pilgrimage, it's a physical um, experience, but it's also obviously the spiritual commitment too. And um, monetary value as well, because it's quite an expensive experience too. So in the words of the Quran, upon those who can make their way there. Okay, so the parameters need to be in place for those to make their way there. Uh, Hajj is held annually with the purpose for Muslims to embark on to Mecca with the intentions of visiting holy places and committing and performing rituals that reflect the beliefs, so the articles of faith, but also the ways in which the prophets that came before Muhammad and including Muhammad lived out the faith. So it's important to note here, Year 12, that um, over the past couple of years with COVID, there have been um, restrictions put in place on how Hajj is performed, but it still reigns through the importance of Hajj for the community and for the individual. So now we're going to have a look at the practices um, of Hajj and how they relate to the principal beliefs. So this is straight from the syllabus. So describe the practice and demonstrate how it expresses the principal beliefs of Islam. So I've put up on the screen here, everybody, um, the process of Hajj. I'm not going to talk through this um, step by step and read this for you. The slides will be made available to your teachers. Um, but one thing I'd also add to your notes is because of how the Hajj is structured, a good way for you to study for this and to prepare for your trials in HSC would to be do, do up an itinerary and say on day one, this is what individuals do to prepare for the Hajj and so on and so forth and map that out this way. Okay, so you can refer back to this slide for this or you can also refer to the visual guide that's here as well. So the step-by-step -step process for what the individual does in order to embark on the Hajj and how they live out the Hajj. So the first thing we look at is entering the state of Aram. And as you'll see up on the screen, um, the adherents dressed in all white. So pilgrims, before they even start the Hajj, need to make the intention that they're going to go on Hajj. So part of making this intention is a preparation. Just like how you would prepare for school in the morning, um, pilgrims prepare for to undertake the Hajj. So this means that they need to have... Um, 
a bath where they clean themselves completely. Men will trim their beards and trim their hair. Women do as well. So they're completely tidy and physically and mentally prepared to embark on this journey. As part of it as well, both men and women dress in all white. And this is significant because it takes away any of the classes. So any class system and creates equality amongst all of the people who are there embarking on Hajj. And that is really important to link to our principal belief of Day of Judgment. Okay, so it represents that when um, the adherent passes away and comes before Allah for this um, Day of Judgment, that all of that material wealth and that materialistic lifestyle is left behind and they're all seen as equal in the in front of Allah. Okay, so that white dress and entering that state of Aram allows for a Muslim to prepare for that and expresses the equality amongst human beings. Um, this one, which is probably what Hajj is known for, is uh, Tawif, which is um, where the pilgrims will circumambulate, which is an anti-clockwise direction walking of the Kaaba seven times. It's important to note here, Year 12, that when you write about Tawif in your responses, um, your good responses and your band six responses will be saying circle, uh, circumambulating other than walking around the Kaaba in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so the terminology of that is really important from that first dot point. We know here that the Kaaba um, in pre-Islamic Arabia was considered a place for idols to be worshipped. And in our history of Islam, it was rebuilt by Abraham and his son Ishmael and declared as a shrine to dedicated to monotheism. So this is the house of the religion for Muslims. And it's where towards where they face when they pray every day. And it's of significant importance. And as the testimonies have said, it's a lot of overwhelming um, qualities that come from this particular step of the Hajj. Okay, so while um, the adherent circumambulates the Kaaba seven times, they will recite prayers. Okay, and they will also be in a place of reverence while they're doing this. So this particular stage and action um, demonstrates the belief of Tawi, okay, which is our total devotion and submission to Allah's will. And it reminds the adherent of the oneness between Allah and humanity. It also will link to the principal belief of the prophets as it journeys back to Abraham's dedication to this shrine as an order from God. So you can tie in your two principal beliefs here. Our next one is Say or Sa, where pilgrims move between two hills known as Safta and Marwa, um, back and forth again seven times. Seven is a significant number in Islam, which covers approximately 3.2 k's. With this, it's really important and symbolic of the tradition of Hagar and her search for thirst for her son Ishmael. So a bit of history behind there and significance to that. So the pilgrims will embark on um, this fast-paced walk between the two hills to represent what was going on in the history of Islam with Hagar and Ishmael in the search for water. So it's believed that through Allah, and through his total care for humanity, that they found water and they were provided for. And the well that they found water from was the spring of Zamzam, which um, adherents do drink from while completing this step of Hajj as well. There's a quote there as well. So it's really important that you're supporting your writing with Quranic or um, Hadith references. So we've got there that indeed suffer among uh, among symbols of Allah. So whoever makes Hajj to the house or performs Umrah, there is no blame upon him for walking between them. And whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is appreciative and knowing. So again, when we're linking our principal beliefs to this particular component of Hajj, we're going to relate it back to Tawid, 
so others' oneness with humanity, but also we can link it back to um, the books, okay, because this story is outlined within the Quran. Next one is our overnight in Nina, which pilgrims travel and make um, an overnight, uh, spend the night before making their journey to Mount Arafat. So this is just like the Prophet Muhammad did when he did his Hajj. So this is outlined in the Hadith and significance that the pilgrim is walking in the footsteps of Muhammad, okay, who is the ultimate prophet for Islam. After they've had that night in Nina, they do um, the Wuluf, which is the stand before Allah. So in Arafat, pilgrims spend time in prayer and it's believed that all prayers will be answered. So as you can see as the image on screen, that's Mount Arafat where pilgrims stay there from around midday to sunset. And while they're there, they are in a state of prayer and submission to Allah. And there will be a sermon that's preached towards the end of the afternoon where then the pilgrims will also give thanksgiving. So it's a real meditative process and it's really important as well for the adherent because it allows them to um, have restoration and forgiveness. So according to tradition, which is outlined in the books of Allah, um, this is the place that Adam and Eve sought restoration and forgiveness of their sins and allowed for the restoration of relationship between them and Allah. So Muslims believe that through acting out this step of Hajj, they will experience forgiveness from Allah, having all of their past sins and transgressions wiped away, and it allows them for a fresh new start and to be renewed within their faith. And this is important for a Muslim when it comes to their day of judgment and Talbid. So our two principal beliefs here that come through really strongly, again, are the Day of Judgment, Tawid, but also we can have that link back to the books of Allah as it um, paves the way from Adam and Eve. After they make their journey back from Arafat, they will pick up different stones along the way to prepare them for Jamarat, which is the stoning of the pillars. So this is an important action throughout Hajj um, where there's three pillars that adherents will stone. So, and each of the pillars represent um, the stoning of Satan and the defeat, um, the rejection of the temptation of Satan and the devil. So pilgrims will stone the largest pillar, which is the first pillar seen in the um slide where it's a symbolic action of them actually turning away from the devil and it symbolizes when Abraham defeated Satan when um, Satan was trying to test him and go towards against Allah's will so here again it reinforces the individual's devotion and submission to Allah so while they stone the largest pillar with three stones um, they will also stone the two smaller pillars, so the middle one and the smallest one, to reaffirm their belief in the prophets and also their final defeat of Satan. So again here, we've got the belief of prophets being expressed as well as that devotion to Allah and a link to that day of judgment as well. Next, we have the Feast of Sacrifice. So Eid al Adha which each pilgrim as part of their um, expression of their faith and as part of their journey for Hajj offers this animal for sacrifice. So generally speaking, this will be a lamb that will be sacrificed. And as a massive part of the Hajj, the meat is processed and packaged with the name of the pilgrim on the package and distributed to the poor. So this is important because it has an impact on the individual providing zakat and fulfilling zakat as one of the pillars, but it also is really significant to the community. So that meat that's processed is given to those in the community who can't afford um, to provide for their families, and it reinforces that idea of them all being one and equal. This event commemorates the events where Abraham was called to sacrifice his son Ishmael and overcame the temptations of the devil. So we see with every single step of the Hajj, year 12, that it's always linked back to the prophet's journeys and a belief as well. 
So with this particular um, action, the sacrifice reminds pilgrims again of their obedience to Allah and their total submission to Allah, but also their importance to work as a community and to provide for those in the community. So, and when they finish the Hajj, they conclude with another Talib. So it's really important that this is one of the significant moments of the Hajj. And a lot of pilgrims who have undertaken the Hajj will attest to the Talib being one of the most powerful moments within their journey. So the next component that we need to look at is the significance that Hajj has for the individual. So like any religious practice, it's going to have a different impact on the individual and how they um, express their faith. But as we know, the Hajj being one of the essential pillars that every Muslim needs to undertake, it's going to bring them closer to God. And so for the individual, they embark on Hajj to deepen their spiritual connection and deepen their understanding of Hajj and of their faith. So it brings the pilgrim closer to Allah and they aim to become a better person. So there have been personal testimonies where people have left Hajj feeling renewed, feeling like a brand new person and stronger in their faith than they ever thought they would be. So when um, the pilgrim leaves the, when it's leaving for Hajj to commence the journey, they're reminded of the ultimate departure from the world and their materialistic world, their hustle and bustle of everyday life and they're brought to mind the importance of the hereafter and what their life is meant to be beyond their living world today. The rituals of the Hajj remind the pilgrim of their day of judgment. Um, everyone is gathered together in the same place, wearing the same clothes in that state of uh, Aram, which um, conducts the same worship. So again, it reminds them of the importance of their monotheistic faith and brings to mind their gratitude of the fortunate um, how fortunate they are to be able to embark on this journey. So as you see up on the board there, there's um, five different areas that you can relate back to here for the individual. So it's really important when you're writing about the individual that you're making a judgment on how significant Hajj is for them. In addition to that, we look at the significance to the community and it's good that when you write about the significance of the community, you link the word ummah, which is the um, Arabic term for community. So for the community, it creates a universal feeling of brotherhood and sisterhood amongst all of them. So Muslims, by gathering together at the same place, do the same thing. And the Hajj is the greatest social event in the Muslim world. Okay, It's where they meet new people, they share ideas, they see different types of culture and pass on experiences. So similar to how you would be familiar with World Youth Day, where there's multiple cultures coming together to celebrate their faith, this is what happens with Hajj as well. So there's adherents from all over the world who get to come together and they're united by the same beliefs and the same practice. So Hajj increases a wider God conscience amongst the Muslim community, and it also creates a greater awareness for non-Muslims as well and the significance of it. And as we've said as well, it removes the division between different religious interpretations. So you'll see there that um, we've got four key areas that has an impact on the community. So the public statement, so it's a witness to the principles of Islam and the beliefs of Islam. It provides inspiration through community support. It's community building on not just a local level, but an international level. So it's an international community here. And for non-Muslims, it creates an awareness of tolerance and respect amongst everybody. And within the Muslim community as well, it creates more respect amongst um, different adherents too. So you'll see that I've also put up some Quranic quotes to help support with your writing. Okay, that first one that's up on the screen, Behold the house of prayer established for mankind is one at Mecca, a blessing, the center of guidance for all people. <coughs> this is important because it's a unifying quote that unifies all adherents in the importance of Hajj. Okay. We also see here a few more. Um, 
<coughs> sorry, and complete the Hajj in service of Allah. And so that service of Allah and that service of community is coming across in that first quote there as well, send an offering for sacrifice, where that sacrifice is made for those in the community who can't afford to go to Hajj and can't afford the basic needs of putting food on their table. The Hadith quotes that are up on the screen at the moment are also really significant that you can use to spice up your writing and support your writing. The first one, the reward is ex um, for an accepted Hajj is nothing less than paradise. That's a beautiful Hadith that you can use to show the importance of the Hajj for the individual and link it very strongly to the Day of Judgment because by completing the Hajj, a Muslim is promised um, a life when it comes to their day of judgment, which is paradise. So it's really honing in on the significance to the individual and reaffirming the belief in the day of judgment and that hereafter. There's also um, the one that's got the picture associated with it. So whoever performs Hajj for Allah's pleasure and does not have sexual relations with his wife and does not do evil or sins, then he will return as if he were born anew. So this idea of rebirth is really important and it's ex re-expressed through the hadith and reaffirms for the adherent the purpose of that rebirth and that spiritual journey. So I want to spend some time with you, Year 12, on applying your knowledge and understanding. So when we look at our HSC questions and trial questions, what do we need to do with what we've learnt in order to maximise our marks? So I've got two questions that I'm going to go through with you. So the first one is um, from section two of last year's HSC paper, and it's a three mark question. So we've got outline one action or ritual in Islam that is drawn from one of the following significant practices. I always teach my students the importance of breaking down the question and understanding the question for what it's asking of you and then what we need to do in order to get a three out of three. So you'll see that I've colour coded what's on the board. So I'm going to break it down for you with each of the areas that are colour coded. So the first thing being outline. So our NESA terminology, our NESA verb here is outlined so it's telling us exactly what we need to do and for this we need to sketch in general terms or indicate the main features of so for this particular response you need to give the main feature of Hajj or one of the main features of Hajj as the question says and give a general overview of what it is okay the question further um, enforces what we need to do so with significant practices in the green box we know that this is our syllabus terminology here. So significant practice straight from the syllabus and you've studied Hajj. So Hajj is what we need to do. It indicates that that's what we're referring to within our question. Where it's got one action or ritual. So it's deliberately telling us in the question here that your marker only wants to you to focus on one of the actions. So you don't need to do two, you don't need to do three, you only need to do one. And it could be from any of the actions of the Hajj. So you could do Tawif, Sai, uh, Jaramat. So any of those, but only one of them. Again, we need to focus on the Hajj and the action, um, outlining its features, and for three marks. So we know this question is worth three marks. So what do we need to do? Essentially, you need to have three key points or three sentences. The first one is naming the action. So if you can name the action, with the right terminology, you're already on your way to one out of three. The next thing is you need to outline how this action occurs. So you need to give a sentence or two about the process of that action. And so um, for to with the circuit emulating of the Kaaba seven times. All right, so we've named it, we've given an outline on what it is. And then to get that third mark, you need to relate it back to the purpose of this action. So in this case, you're going to link it back to how it expresses one of the principal beliefs of Islam. So here's a sample response, all right? One significant ritual performed during Hajj is known as the Stone of Jarama. Pilgrims, Muslim pilgrims throw pebbles at three wars in the city of Mina. This action reflects rejection of Satan 
as well as the rejection of adherence own temptations to evil. The overall purpose behind this ritual is to follow the command and manifest submission to the servitude of Allah, showing complete obedience. So this response is a three out of three. But what makes it a three out of three? So firstly, we've got the naming of the ritual. Then we've got there an outline of what the ritual is. And so throw pebbles and reflects the rejection of Satan. But then we've got the purpose behind it as well. Okay, so to command and manifest submission to the servitude of Allah, showing complete obedience. So those three points that are made in this answer allows for this to be a three out of three response. Secondly, our 20 mark response. So section three of the HSC exam and your trial exam will require you to complete an essay on um, the given question. So in this case, this is from 2017. We've got a stimulus of all mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you that you may become righteous. It's a Quranic quote. And then the question is, how does one significant practice in Islam assist adherents to become righteous? And so we've got a question that directly relates to the quote. So in order to have a look at breaking down this question, year 12, we need to break down the stimulus and look at what the stimulus is saying. And then we need to look at what the question is saying. So when we're reading the stimulus, we know that it's a significant practice. So we know that it's Hajj. So what can we pull out from the stimulus to relate to the Hajj? So let's have a look. We've got what's highlighted in yellow. So worship your Lord, created you and those before you, that you may become righteous. So when we're breaking that down, we've got worship your Lord. Straight away, we know that worship your Lord is linking to Tawid as the belief of the between other and humanity who created you and those before you. So for a Muslim, those before the individual, so the rest of the community, but also it's going to link to the prophets. So we know straight away that every single step of the Hajj is relating back to what the prophets have done in Islam and relate to the worship of Allah. So we know straight away when we're looking at that quote, I can link it to the prophets, I can link it to the devotion to Allah, I can link it to Tawbih. Okay, then the other important part of this quote that we need to look at is that you may become righteous. So what does it mean to become righteous? In this particular case, we're looking at Muslims working towards becoming righteous. So Muslims working towards what is expected of them as outlined in their faith and also um, how they live out their practice. So what's right? what's correct, what's morally guided for Muslims. So think about the five pillars. So our five pillars of faith, the obligations towards Allah, but also the obligations to the Ummah, so the rest of the Muslim community, and what steps Muslims need to take in order to get there. And the Hajj is a significant practice in doing that. So you need to make sure with this quote that you understand it before you even look at answering your question. So then when we break down the question, our finesse of verb here is how. So for how, it means explain. So whenever you see how in a trial exam or a HSC exam, you need to relate your cause and effect. Okay, so what happens and what's the impact of that? Make the relationships between things really clear and evident. So your marker wants to see what it is and the implications that it has really clearly with examples, with evidence to support it and provide the why and or the how. And so that cause and effect and relationship between things. The question then tells us what we need to relate that cause and effect between. So first of all, one significant practice, we know straight away from our syllabus that that's Hajj. So Hajj is a significant practice that we need to focus on. So when assisting adherence, we're looking at the individual focus here. So we're looking, it doesn't say community, it doesn't say groups, it says adherence. So we're looking at the individual. So what does it have as an impact on the adherent 
and how does that adherent become righteous? So with our green of become righteous, straight away, it's a direct link back to the stimulus. And so we know that um, to become righteous is the link to the stimulus and it needs to be embedded throughout your response. Good responses will make sure that they have a link to the stimulus throughout their whole response. And it's embedded throughout their introduction, their body paragraphs and their conclusion but it's not that something that's just thrown on the end of each paragraph. It needs to be um, fluid throughout the response. So you can look at here linking the Hajj as an obligation for adherence as outlined in the Quran and also the five pillars. So part of um, being a Muslim and part of living in Muslim life is to devote themselves to Allah, but it's also that they need to go on Hajj. So, and going on Hajj allows them to become righteous because of walking the footsteps of other prophets, of showing that submission to Allah. So you need to look at specifically how it leads to a morally right life in the eyes of Allah. And obviously for 20 marks, it needs to be an essay. So within your essay, you need to use the stimulus, embed the stimulus well, and you'll see um, that you also need to apply key terminology. So one of the marking criteria dot points is applying terminology. So that's where we need to see some of those um, Islamic terms and also Quranic references. So for your response, Year 12, you need to be looking at a succinct and well put together response in order to be meeting that top bands. So it's looking at embedding the, uh, sorry, the stimulus in your writing as well as ensuring that you're supporting what you're saying with the correct terminology and with correct um, Quranic and Hadith references. So suggested um, uh, points that you can put in your response. So the fifth pillar, which is required at least once in an adherence life. So pilgrimage is the supreme prayer for forgiveness of sins committed and the ultimate preparation for eternity. So we can link that directly back to righteousness for the adherent because that forgiveness when they stand on Mount Arafat and they're modeling that forgiveness and that restoration of relationship between Allah and humanity, that straight away is showing that they're trying to live a morally right life. Um, it's focused on the foundation of the tradition involving a spiritual, mental and physical journey to Mecca and all three elements would require an adherent to retain, attain righteousness. And so the spiritual, the mental and the physical journey is really important. The reminder of equality, so when the Muslim enters the state of Iran and that equality, it's letting go of anything, um, any prejudices towards other people um, and coming together as a community where every single person is considered equal and it's letting go of any um, immoral behaviour towards anybody else. The performance of rituals which um, mirror the actions of Muhammad and Hagar help adherents to become righteous because we know that Muhammad was the prophet and the model of Islam. So by living in his footsteps and following his footsteps, adherents are inherently doing something that's right. Undertaking the Hajj demonstrates a commitment to the greater Jah uh, Jahid, thus indicating the adherent's journey to become righteous. So that need to, that balance between the struggle and internal struggle of what's right and wrong. And the personal struggle to worship Allah is adhis and adherent to visibly support the promotion and expansion of Islam. So it's part of their moral obligation to be part of Hajj and it's morally right to engage in Sakat by offer, doing their sacrifices and offerings. So every single step of the Hajj can be linked back to that quote and writing well. And lastly, I've just put up on the screen some key terms and must use words within your responses. So it's broken down into color coding there that with the descriptions in blue, um, the beliefs and rituals in red, significance to the individual, some key terms in purple and significance to the Ummah or the community in green. And then a few scripture quotes and Hadith quotes in there as well. Okay. 
And so I am going to open up to any questions. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Good afternoon. Good luck Year 12 with your upcoming trials and your HSC exams.